Today we are going to discuss Nabatea, a kingdom that was located in the area of modern day Jordan and northern Saudi Arabia and stretched into the territories of what is modern day Israel, Palestine and Egypt at times as well as up far into the area of Damascus in Syria during its greatest extent. Nabatea existed at least from the 4th century BC to 106 AD when the kingdom was conquered by the Roman Empire and integrated into the Roman system of provinces. We don't know much about the early Nabateans and much of their history is shrouded in mystery. But we know that they were among one of several nomadic Bedouin tribes that roamed the northern Arabian deserts and moved with their herds to wherever they could find pasture and water. These Nabateans spoke Nabatean, a language that is either extremely close to later Arabic or could be considered an ancient form of Arabic, depending upon definitions of the Arabic language. It is possible that the Nabateans are mentioned by the Assyrians on ancient stone and clay tablets when they write the same consonants as in the name of the Nabateans in the Nabatean language. Nun, Ba, Dro and wow, for a group living in the same area as the old kingdom of Nabatea. With both Assyrian and Nabatean being Semitic languages, they place greater emphasis on the consonants, and the consonants tend to change a lot less than the vowels in translations of names, making it likely that they are in fact referring to the same Nabateans, but before they became a kingdom, as at this stage they were just a tribe. The Nabateans might also go back to biblical stories in connection to Nabaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, the father of the Arabs. Josephus, a Jewish historian of the Roman era and contemporary of the Nabateans, suggested that there was a connection between the Nabateans and Nabaioth, though some modern historians doubt this connection. As a kingdom rather than just a tribal group though, the Nabateans emerged after the collapse of the Qadarite confederation, a group of ancient united tribes in northern Arabia, possibly as early back as during the Achaemenid dynasty of Persia, but definitely established as a power during the age of the Didochi, the age of the successor generals of Alexander the Great, where they became involved in several conflicts with the successor kingdoms of Alexander the Great's empire. And the source of these conflicts? Well, that was the great wealth of Nabatea, as Nabatea became known as a rich kingdom, and is mentioned as such in several sources by various early writers that were contemporary with the Nabatean kingdom. The Nabateans prospered and became rich due to the trade caravans that transported various goods such as frankincense, gemstones such as cornelian, Metals involved in bronze and brass making, such as copper, tin and zinc, and myrrh and spices from what is today Yemen, across the Arabic peninsula, passing through their capital Petra and ending up in the port of Rasa for shipment to the markets found in the Mediterranean and to the rest of the Middle East. The Nabateans were a part of the Ethiopic Yemeni Indian Triangle Trade Network an ancient trading network that had existed since time immemorial in the area and which I have made a video about which you can look at after this video. But suffice to say it was a gigantic trading network that granted enormous riches to those that were involved in it. And the richness of this trade is apparent in Petra, their famed capital, with many of its buildings carved directly into the rock. Today the ruins of it is a popular tourist site, but back in the old times, in the days of the kingdom of Nabatea, it was an important trade city and trade station on the way between southern Arabia and the Mediterranean world and the rest of the Middle East. I want you to imagine the cost of the careful labor required to carve out these large buildings from the rock, as they are hollow and highly decorated, both on the outside and on the inside. Rather than just cutting the blocks, they can be easier made to assemble into buildings wherever you please. One mistake on these buildings, and or a major crack, as everything is one solid rock and the entire building risks being ruined. This required expert hands that most probably did not come cheaply and thus points towards the richness of the Nabateans 
as they could afford these types of constructions, which were not only carved out in Petra, their capital city, but also in other cities and places of the Nabataean kingdom. The Nabataean kingdom and its cities, especially the capital city of Petra, was a center for commerce and cultural exchange, which can be noted in the strong Hellenistic influence as seen on this Romano-Greek coin. Notice the Greek armor and the hairstyle. This is a Nabataean coin. And the statues of soldiers wearing Greek armor can also be found in the Nabataean areas, such as here in Petra. Also these depictions of soldiers wearing Greek style armor implies a possible adoption of the Greek style of organized warfare. This would not be surprising as the Greek style was effective as seen by Alexander the Great's conquest of the Persian Empire and the Nabataeans had close contacts with the Greeks of the Didoki of the successor kingdoms and also went to war against the successor kingdoms of Alexander of Ptolemaic Egypt and against the Seleucids who utilized the same style of Greek warfare as Alexander the Great so they would know about it and adopt it for their own purposes to defend themselves as many of the Nabataeans neighbors sought to take the wealth that they had. Adoption of Hellenic Greek influences in warfare is not a very far stretch. Also, they would not be the only non-Greeks to have adopted this style of warfare, as Greek style warfare was also used by the Phoenician Carthaginians and a lot of other peoples that had contacts with the Greeks and the successor states of Alexander's empire. But it was just warfare. Even much of the architecture is influenced from the Greeks. Look at these columns, for example, on these Nabataean buildings. Through Alexander the Great's conquests, Greek culture had become the dominant culture in the Middle East and the Mediterranean world. And the Nabataeans, that were mainly traders that traveled all over the Middle East, adopted this influence and put their own native spin on it with their own unique architecture. For example, you can identify a rock building as coming from the Nabataeans by this very distinct staircase structure found on many Nabataean buildings all over northern Arabia, such as Khosrow el Farid in Al Hijr, also known as Madain Saleh, an area with many of their other cities. Speaking about structures and cities, there was also Bosra and Litsana as other cities that belonged to the Nabataeans and had actually even more Greek influenced architecture. Indeed, these structures were identical to regular Greek stone block and stone brick structures, though not much remains of these structures except the foundations and some ruins. And continuing on the matter of structures and cities, the Nabataean kingdom was surprisingly urbanized in that it had several large cities that were important enough to be mentioned in various sources. For example, both Petra and Bosra being mentioned in the sources as important trade cities. And Petra was among the greater cities of the Middle East, an important trade hub. It and the other cities of the Nabataean kingdoms are an early example of urbanized Northern Arabian culture. The south of the Arabic Peninsula had had large cities for a long time before the Nabataeans, dating back to the early Bronze Age even. But in the north they had lacked any major cities. Sure, there had existed towns previously, but with the Nabataeans and their kingdom you see for the first time the development of major urbanized centers on the northern parts of the Arabian Peninsula. The emergence of the Nabataean kingdom must have brought with it stability and security in such a way that what was previously smaller towns now could develop into major cities as overland trade became possible through the added security of a stable strong kingdom in the north that would enjoy great prosperity. Though, like anything good, it eventually comes to an end, and the Nabataeans would become conquered by the Roman Empire under Emperor Trajan in 106-107 AD, marking the end of this Greek-influenced Arabian Kingdom. 
and if you want to know about a later Arabic political entity in the area that was heavily Romanized, just like the Nabataeans were heavily influenced by the Greeks, check out this video about the Ghassanids. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities.